So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Since we had two Saturdays, no classes, we have to make up classes, okay? To be able to cope up with our syllabus as scheduled. Now, in this manner, students will be sacrificing, will be able to sacrifice their time uh, listening and taking down taking down notes would probably pass of course okay so this is where we see students who are willing to go further so we will be discussing for today's lecture standard operating procedure number two of the EOD operations render safe procedures access recovery and disposal of conventional non-military or commercial homemade and or improvised explosive device transportation procedures of IED and blast in place operation so the scope this SOP prescribes the procedures in the conduct of operations, render safe, render safe procedures, access, recovery of conventional or improvised explosive items. So when we say conventional, these are bombs that were invented for war. While when we say IED, uh, conventional, this can be bought at the market okay while we say when we say improvised explosive items these are homemade explosives and improvised explosive devices so its applicability it applies to explosive ordnance disposal division the logistics support service of Camp Krami, Quezon City unless otherwise prescribed we have here the term Area Control Center. It is an EOD control center which provides operational control, planning, and administrative services related to EOD operations for assigned areas of responsibility. In other type of police responses, like in hostage taking, we call it the command post. Diba? So, command post, ang counterpart niya sa IOD, area control center. We have here the term biological, as used here in biological weapons, agents operations, fillers, and of thinking capacity, refers to foreign ordnance and program. And so, biological weapons, pagkasinabing biological weapons, diba? one of uh, its kind is the anthrax. Yan yung, if you're able to hold or touch it, it has a biological effect on a person's body. Yan, di ba? Pwede tayong unti-unting ma, mamatay. It can also cause diseases. We also have here the term coordination. So as used herein, it refers to active participation between elements of the PNP and the Armed Forces of the Philippines major services having interest in explosive ordnance device, explosive ordnance disposal activities. Agencies coordinated with shall provide positive participation and shall not operate by default okay so take note of this ladies and gentlemen we call it coordination thus the parties must act accordingly as coordinated and as planned they shall not coordinate uh, they shall not operate on themselves all alone diba? these two bodies the pnp and the afp should work as one Yung parang motor at sasakyan lang. Ay, parang motor at driver lang, di ba? O kaya parang uh, piloto at yung jet. 
dapat they should be working as one. Hindi pwedeng kinakabing nung driver pa kanan yung sasakyan, eh, kumakaliwa yung sasakyan. Dapat kung pa kanan ang kabit, pa kanan din ang punta. Diba? So, that's your coordination. Explosive ordnance. It includes bombs, warheads, guided and ballistic missiles, artillery, mortars, rockets, and even small arms ammunition. So, what again are small arms, ladies and gentlemen? We include here your uh, pistols and rifles, di ba? Yan. So, ammunition for pistols and rifles are also included as explosive ordnance. All mines, yan. so what are mines? Yan yung mga booby traps na pagka nasagin nyo yung wire, pwedeng sumabog. Kaya pag natapakan nyo, mag-initiate sa sabog. Torpedoes and depth charges. What are depth charges? These are used underwater. Yan. So parang rocket lang din siya, pero underwater. Pyrotechnics. Yan. Paputok. Clusters. When we say clusters, yan yung mga nakalagay sa rocket. Tapos pag uh, magbubukas yung rocket, meron ulit, meron ulit laman yung loob niya na maghihiwa-hiwalay ulit. Tapos may laman na siyang explosive. Yan yung clusters. It is contained in a rocket. Yan. Clusters. And dispensers. Cartridges and propellant actuating devices. Electro-explosive devices. So when we say electro, electro, it makes use of electrical charges. So meron, meron din tayong explosives na ganyan. Okay? Yung bar, battery operated. Ano yan? Electro-explosive devices. Clandestine and improvised explosive devices. And all similar or related items or components containing explosives, propellants, nuclear fission, and nuclear fusion. So when you say nuclear fission, the joining of the nucle uh, nuclear. Diba? When you say fusion, the separation of nuclear materials and biological and chemical agents. So we have here the term explosive ordnance disposal, EOD. It refers to the act of detection, identification, field evaluation, render safe, recovery, and final disposal of unexplosive uh, unexploded ordnance. So when we say unexploded ordnance, we call it OXO, di ba? Capital letters UXO, unexploded ordnance. It may also re uh, it may also include the rendering safe and or disposal of explosive ordnance, which has become hazardous by damage or deterioration when the disposal of such Explosive ordnance requires procedures or equipment which exceeded the normal requirement for routine disposal. Yan. So, pagka hindi na, na, hindi na kaya pasabugin normally, we have to employ EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal. So, what again is Render safe. It is an operation which aims to package and transport recovered OXU or explosive ordnance safely. Yeah. To include, of course, its disposal. Okay. So, how do we usually dispose OXU or explosive ordnance? Siyempre, 
uh, sa mga populated, sa mga urban places, hindi natin pwedeng pasabugin yun dyan, di ba? So, we have to package it safely and carry it to a safe place. Then, can we have it exploded? So, is, on, is explosion only the uh, way to dispose oxu or explosive ordnance? No. Pwede rin naman na yung unti-unting lagarihin hanggang sa tapos sa pag nabutas yung bomb eh iimpihan yung mga explosive devices sa loob niya yung mga propellants di ba yung mga black powder iimpihan pagka naman planted bomb yan yung mga my wire hindi disarm di ba so hindi disarm we have here explosive ordnance disposal incident the suspected or detected presence of unexploded ordnance or damaged explosive ordnance which, con uh, which constitute a hazard to friendly operations, installations, personnel, or materials. Kaya pagka may bomb threat, tapos na-verified na meron talagang bomb, yan, so bomb is exploded is uh, considered explosive ordnance, di ba? So, we call it explosive ordnance disposal incident. So, we have here explosive ordnance reconnaissance. Okay? So, reconnaissance, recon. The investigation, detection, location, marking, and initial identification of explosive ordnance items, evacuation or uh, evacuation of personnel, accomplishment of other emergency measures required, and reporting of suspected explosive ordnance by the explosive ordnance reconnaissance agents to determine the need for further action. So, in the PNP, we have the EOD course. Yan, yung pang-EOD talaga. And we also have the EORA, E-O-R-A. The schooling for 15 days, the basics of EOD. Yan. So, after you are done with your EORA, EORA training, E-O-R-A, you can now be able to Investigate, detect, locate, mark any explosive ordnance or unexploded, uh, unexploded ordnance. So, yan ang gamit ng YORA. Kung baga, YORA agents, EOR agents, EOR, explosive ordnance reconnaissance agents, are initially the persons who first recovers bombs or who first usually responds to bomb threat and if it is confirmed a bomb, there's a confirmation that there's a bomb, then can the EOD respond. Yan. So, EURA, EOR, agents, and EOD can work hand in hand. So, when we say recon, it refers to the location, pagkahanap, di ba? Reconnaissance. We have here the IED, explosive, improvised explosive devices. Those devices placed or fabricated in an improvised manner, incorporating explosive, black powder, or destructive, lethal, noxious, pyrotechnics, or incendiary chemicals. So, when, when we say incendiary chemicals, these are chemicals that are able to produce fire. So, what are these? Pwedeng gas, di ba? Pwedeng black powder din. Di ba? They produce fire. And designed to destroy, disfigure, distract, or harass. These are IED. Improvised Explosive device. Kumbaga parang homemade explosive device yung mga yan. 
it is not available in the market. Unlike your conventional explosive devices, it can be bought from the market. Of course, if you have the necessary permit, hindi naman pwedeng, ay, gusto kong bumili ng bomba, makakabili ka na. You have to have the necessary permit. Uh, approval from the RCSU. From the CSG, the Civil Security Group. Yeah. So what again is the Civil Security Group? It is a National Support Unit under the PNP, which takes charge of the issuance of licenses. Diba? What type of licenses? Your LTOP F, License to Own and Possess Firearm, and Firearms License. Diba? Aside from that, Security Guard Licenses. Diba? License and License to practice security profession if you would like to put up a security agency so one of its function is to grant permit to purchase explosives or explosive materials okay so it is the civil security group so, we also have here the OXU, the Unexploded Explosive Ordnance. So, explosive ordnance which has been fired, projected, dropped from the aircraft to space vehicles or placed in such a manner as to be capable of having become armed and subject to detonation and by design or accident has failed to detonate. Yeah. So these devices were planted or planned to explode. However, it failed to explode and thereby recovered. Yeah, diba? So parang, ay paputok. Ay hindi, hindi siya pumutok oh. Nilapitan ng isang bata. Nung sisindihan na niya ulit, biglang pumutok. Diba? So, there had been a delay in its, in its explosion. So, ang tawag doon, hang fire pagkabaril. Diba? Hang fire. Pero pagka hindi talaga pumutok, miss fire. Diba? Yan. So, yung mga nag miss fire, yung mga hindi pumutok, kumbaga, but hang fire and miss fire is applicable for Firearms, okay? It's not uh, applicable to to explosive. So, ang tawag doon, unexploded naman sa mga explosives. Yung mga hindi sumabog na bomba, na pasabog. Yan. So, kung hindi sumabog yan, those OXU should be rendered safe. Yan. So, rendered safe. Dapat ma-package safely, ma-travel, and ma dispose in a safe area. So where do you dispose bombs? Pwedeng sa sea, ocean, diba? or desert, or to places which has no population. So OXU or the unexploded explosive ordnance. Are explosive ordnance which has been fired, okay? So it was fired, ah, projected, dropped from aircraft to space vehicles, or placed in such a manner as to be capable of having become armed and subject to detonation, or by design or accident, has failed to detonate. So that's your keyword. It has failed to detonate, okay? We call it unexploded uh, unexploded explosive or nans so we have here the term had been fired yeah. so
So when we say we use the term fired, the rocket was aimed to hit something, di ba? Yan. Tapos projected, ito pala yung projected. Yan, naka-aim siya. Naka-aim siya to hit something. Projected. When we say naman drop, yan yung dumaan lang yung aircraft, tapos naghulog lang siya ng mga bomba. Yan. So, projected or drop. Bombs. So, tanong nyo, Sir, yun lang ba ang mga oksu? Yung mga hinulog or mga projected lang ng mga aircraft? No. Di ba? We have here the second phrase, or placed in such a manner as to uh, as to be capable of having become armed. So, pwede rin natin isama dito yung mga planted bombs. So, not necessarily coming from the aircraft. So, pwede rin nakaplant sa bomb, pero hindi, ay nakaplant sa land, pero hindi sumabog. Yan, di ba? So, we can also classify that as an oxu. So, we have here conventional incidents. There are numerous numerous explosive items that do not require complete procedures such as grenades, small rockets, and of thinking capacity. On incidents such as this, the unit commander may dispatch only the personnel necessary to complete the render safe procedure and removal. Yeah. So disposal requires all available personnel and equipment at the incident to complete the operations. Why? Because we know for a fact that no others, no civilian people should be going near recovered bombs. So some of the UD personnel should protect the bomb scene. Movements, operations that requires maximum number of personnel and equipment should use two or more vehicles as safety regulation uh, requires. Okay? So, two or more vehicles. Conventional incidents or unexploded explosive ordnance must be loaded in one vehicle with one senior EOD supervisor and driver on board while all other personnel and equipment must be on separate vehicle to minimize casualty should any untoward incidents happen. Yan, okay? So take note ladies and gentlemen that in render safe procedures it is a must to use at least two or more vehicle to which one of the vehicle which will be used to carry the bomb guided by a senior EOD supervisor while the other vehicle will be used to carry personnel. Okay? Upon arrival at the tentatively selected CP command post, cite the commander as command post site. CP. The commander must reorient his plan to the existing conditions. Firm selection of a command post should consider the following. So, minimum safe distance, fragmentation range, and the munitions or suspected explosive or nans. Okay? So, this is a true in, respond, uh, in responding to bomb threats. Okay? In render safe operations. Whenever there is an explosive in the site, these are the things to be considered by your commander. Yeah. So we have to establish the minimum safe distance from that explosive 
device. So uh, normally, uh, the average safe distance of a bump is 50 meters diameter, okay? And uh, no, not diameter, radius pala. 50 meters radius from the location of that bump. Yan. So, kung, uh, kung yung bomb ay nasa isang place, nasa isang classroom, let's say for example, 50 meters radius, so pabilog yan ha, radius, where do we use the word radius and diameter? Sa bilog. So, what is diameter? What is radius? Radius is the distance from the center to uh, from the center to the end part, uh, end part of the circle, di ba? While, while diameter is the distance from one point, one end point to another end point of the circle. So, we so say, radius is half of a diameter, di ba? So, when we say 50 meters radius, sabi, saan ang, ang, uh, Sentro ng radius Dapat yung bump So doon nag-umpisa okay? So from the location of the bump There should be 50 meters Away from that bump So yan Yan, yan ang, ang safe distance natin From the bump 50 meters Pero hindi lang sa isang area Pabilog, circular siya So So dapat All circular parang compass lang ilalagay niyo yung bomb dun sa sentro that's the other foot of the compass tapos yung yung uh, compass handling the pencil paikutin niyo so kung nasaan yung uh, uh, above 50 meters distance yan yung mga safe range natin safe distance from the bomb when we say fragmentation, the term fragmentation, yan, uh, yan yung pag, uh, pag nagbukas yung mga parts ng mga bomba, pag sumabog, di ba? Maging fragment yung seal niya, yung cover niya. And these fragments can also injure persons. So, hindi lang yung explosive ang, ang dangerous na pwedeng tumama sa tao, but also the fragments of the bombs, di ba? So, pagka may sumabog na bomba, tapos si Pedro natamaan ng sunog na black powder, di ba? Uh, yan. So, Hindi pa fragmentation yun. Hindi pa fragmentation yun. Unlike, unlike in this uh, second example, pagka naman si Pedro ay eh, natamaan ng bakal na itinapon ng bomba, pra, yun ang fragmentation. Okay? Kaya nga sa mga, sa mga IED, in IED, they put nails, mga pako as fragments. So, yun ngayon yung tatapon na pwedeng maging pwedeng tatama sa mga tao pag may sumabog na IED. So, aside from the pagsabog, there are also fragments na pwedeng makatama diba? sa mga personnel. So, fragmentation a fragmentation range of the munitions or suspected Explosive or nuts. So, available means and root route of approaches to Oxus. Okay? So, we also, the commander should also select the safest and the best route to approach the Oxu. So, syempre hanapin as much as possible. Our basis in selecting the best route is yung pinakamalawak na rota. Tapos, as much as possible, yung patad na rota, hindi siya rough road, okay? So, kasi pagka rough road yan, pwede ma-initiate by accident yung bump, di ba? Alam niyo ba yung parang cook pagka-shake-shake nyo, tapos bubuksan nyo sa sabog, di ba? 
Yan. So, pwedeng ganyan kasi mangyari sa mga bumps. Meron tayong shake uh, initiated na bumps. Pwede yan. True chemical reaction of the components of that bump. We also have here, use of terrain features to the advantage of the operations. Extending or shortening distance to personnel and equipment. So, of course, that's one factor. Hanapin natin yung pinaka-shortcut. Yung short. And, so, pinaka-shortcut. So, we have here improvised explosive or incendiary devices. So, what again are incendiary devices? These are devices that are capable to produce fire. Di ba? Such as your gas, black powder. Kaya nga meron tayong incendiary bullet. Di ba? In your ballistics, forensic, uh, forensics ballistics. So, what are incendiary bullets? These are bullets that when it hits the target, it produces fire. It is capable to produce fire. So, ano ang klase naman yan? RPG is one, di ba? So, pag tumawa sa inyo ang RPG, may pagsabog at may sunog na magaganap. So, when responding to an incident of this nature, the team must rely on their previous experiences encountered IED in the operational area. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, uh, discretion, discretion really is the word here. Kasi meron yung mga tao na meron yung mga signs na yung person ay gagawa ng krimen na yung mga pulis lang ang nakakaalam. Pero yung civilian, hindi niya alam yun. Nang judgment niya, ay parang naka, sobra naman na yung pulis. Silita niya kaagad yung tao na yun. Diba? So, maring judgment. Pero, malamang, based on the experience of the police officer, through the use of his discretion, may gagawin na talaga yung tao yun. Diba? Same is true with our EOD personnel. So, mer based on their experience, meron silang mga nare-develop na discretion. Yan. So, discretion are not based on papers. Diba? It is based on experience. Makapuha mo lang yan sa experience. So, when responding to an incident of this nature, the team must rely on their previous experiences encountered, i.e. in the operational area, combined with a thorough analysis of all information available in the determination of the plan of action, the team must take particular to the time element and technical intelligence to be collected. Yes, because we also have time initiated bombs, di ba? Yung may mga plant na oras. Yung mga in 5 minutes, sasabog na. Ayan, so, dapat meron tayong time frame for those type of bombs. And technical intelligence. So, when we say technical intelligence, kung ito ang gagawin natin, ano kaya ang mangyayari, di ba? Dapat magaling tayo sa mga ganyan. Nung susunod na mangyayari, pagkagan ito ang, ang action natin. So, dapat alam din nila yan. Technical intelligence. So, general plan for operations. We have to organize command post for operation. And we have to designate personnel to function as follows. So, we have the command post supervisor. We have two main initial entry or work party. We should also have a recorder. So, parang soko team lang, di ba? We should also have equipment specialist. We have publication specialist. And additional personnel to function under the supervision as required. So, kung kailangan pa ng K9 to detect other bombs, so, yun yung mga additional personnel to function, to function under the supervisor as required. So, what usually is the function of the recorder? So, this serves as the recorder of the scene of the crime operations, di ba? It records all pieces of evidence. And so, recorder.
So, brief personnel on plan of approaches to include vehicle or on foot. We have a vibration sensitive explosive, di ba? Kaya pagka vibration sensitive yung mga explosive, bawal ang sasakyan. Just like in your gasoline station, di ba? Kaya nga sa mga gasoline station, pag may magpapagas, ang, ang logo doon. Switch off your mobile phone. Why? Because it is radiation sensitive. Switch off your engine, di ba? So, yun. Kaya kailangan din natin uh, wag gumamit ng sasakyan because it may cause radiation and vibration. So, if the, if the OXO has a tendency to be initiated by a vibration or radiation coming from a vehicle, then of course, we will be approaching the bump on foot. Diba? So, route approaches. Ayan. So, tingnan natin yung pinakamalawak at saka yung shortcut. Diba? Equipment. What are the proper tools to be used? This is very true, ladies and gentlemen. Because if we don't use the proper tools, instead of uh, yung trabaho, katatapusin lang ng one minute, eh, tatagal yan ng one hour. Why? Because we don't have the proper equipment. Di ba? And communications to be used in checkpoints or time intervals of checks. Yan. So, meron tayong recorder of recorder and monitor monitor of time intervals. So, we receive the information of we receive the bomb threat at 8 a.m. this day. Tapos, at this very hour, the team responded with two vehicles. Di ba? Tapos, at this very hour, a command post was established. At this hour, two personnel entered the site. Yan. And so on and so forth. So, move toward the OXU until it is easily visible. Field glasses should be used. Yan. So, pagka sumabog, syempre, at least safe yung ating mata. Just like your goggles when you are uh, firing under your PE4, di ba? Those goggles are meant to protect your eyes. And establish communication. So each member work party approach items separately to obtain positive identification of items, fuses, and to determine condition whether it is armed or whether it is safe. Take photograph of the item without using flash. Okay, so take note of this, ladies and gentlemen, that whenever you take photograph of an explosive material or explosive ordnance, use cameras without flash. So, dapat walang flash. Bakit? Kasi baka may radiation. Di ba? And or similar lighting equipment. So, avoid using those. Report observation and submit films or camera to the command post and determine the render safe procedure and or disposal method. Yan. So, titingnan natin kung ano, paano ba natin dapat i-render safe itong material nito. Ano ba yung dapat? Bubuhatin ba natin o pasasabukin na natin on-site? Diba? Or ilalabas ba natin kung nasa loob siya ng building? Paano natin ilalabas? Diba? So, then can we use now the word rigging, R-I-G-G-I-N-G, -G -I -I rigging. Yan, yun, yun. Ilalabas natin yung explosion, uh, explosive with the use of uh, with a use of rope. Okay? So, syempre, hindi natin lalapitan yung yung bomba, pero tatalihan natin from a distance. And, and we should be able to 
bring it out from the building safely. We call it rigging. So it is essential that pertinent or current publications be used. If deviation is necessary, the senior EOD man present will uh, present will determine deviation. Yeah. So take note of this, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, if it is required for us to not follow the standard operating procedure, we call it deviation. It depends, uh, which is, which depends on the assessment of the senior EOD. Yeah, then can we have it? Okay. So advise local area commander or civil official of the probable danger to personnel and materials in the area if the render safe attempt should result in detonation. Okay. So take note of this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say, for example, there's a bomb planted at the University of the Corellianas. We should inform. Okay. So we should inform the civilian populace of the dangers okay of the dangers of that bomb if in case the render safe procedure fails and the bomb detonates yan so kaya nga sinasabi natin ang pinakamainam na gawin pag may na-identify na bomba is palabasin lahat ng tao with a minimum distance of at least 50 meters away dapat now if you are let's say for example uh, a person in a bomb threat scenario saan ka dapat magtatago di ba so yung 50 meters open space yon okay but that 50 meters can be reduced pwede mabawasan yung 50 meters so long as you have a concrete protection so pagka may bakal may wall na naka-cover pwede mas shorten yung distance However, the problem is the wave, the shock effect, di ba? So, yun lang ang, ang mahirap. If you still have time to run, to go beyond 50 meters, that's better. But if you don't have enough time and the bomb is already to explode, then you hide yourself on a concrete wall or iron wall. Di ba? Safe yun. So, kahit na sumabog, Yung granada o yung bomba, basta behind walls ka, at least hindi ka tatamaan ng explosive or ng fragments. Pero hindi lang natin alam, hindi lang, hindi lang natin sure yung shock. Why? Because depending on the explos uh, explosive material, kahit na hindi ka matamaan. Gaya nga nang sabi natin previously, di ba? We have the bomb suit. EODs have their bomb suit. In their attempt to detonate a bomb or to disarm a bomb, Yan, nilapitan yung bomb with their bombs uh, in their bomb suit nilapitan yung bomb pero nagkamali okay sumabog yung bomba so we can still recover the complete body of that EOD inside the bomb suit however we cannot be sure that he will be alive because of the explosion shock effect on the internals of the body yan, di ba? so pwedeng sa brain pwedeng sa heart so advise local area yan, sabi na natin yan advise local area commander or civil official pwedeng kay mayor or pwedeng yung president ng UC pagka sa UC yun or si city mayor pwede rin di ba? kasi hawak niya hindi lang 50 meters pagka UC, UC main wala pang 50 meters uh, yung SM eh Yan. Okay, so that's why we have to advise civil official of the probable danger to personnel or persons and materials in the area if the render safe attempt should result in detonation. Kung sakaling pasasabugin na lang natin, kaya kung sakaling lang magkamuli. Dapat safe in distance. Obtain required tools and equipment, move communication equipment to work site, Perform render safe procedure and report result to the command post. Issue instruction for disposal. 
methods, location, and manner of transportation if required. So, assemble personnel, advise control of incident completion, then submit incident report and or technical intelligence report in accordance with the regulations. Then, continue technical operation as directed or return to headquarters. So, kailan tayo magre-return to headquarters? After the render safe procedure is completed. Pero kung hindi pa yun complete, at least dun lang tayo sa submit incident or technical intelligence report to the proper office who has the need to know. So, transportation procedure of improvised explosive device. When the suspected IED is safely rendered, uh, safely rendered safe, when the suspected IED is safely packaged or rendered safe, it must be brought to the EOD command post for possible review of its content following the safety procedures. So, proper handling and care must be exercised during the transportation of the bomb. Okay? So, take note, ladies and gentlemen, that in packaging a bomb, we should be able to identify the type of bomb. Diba? So, dapat alam natin yung kung anong uri ng bomb yun. And we should be able to identify how it initiates or how it detonates. Dapat malaman natin kung ano kayong pwede makapag-trigger para sumabog ko, di ba? So, yun yung protection natin para hindi masagi, para hindi maalog, or para hindi uh, masagi, maalog, matamaan accidentally, di ba? Or matriggered. Yun, di ba? So, yun yung pagpapackage. And, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, during the transportation of such of such OXU or IED, we have to maintain the packaging. Ayan. We have to make sure that the uh, that its initiator or the detonator is safe diba? from its probable cause of detonation. Ayan. So, the bomb must be placed in a bomb basket or wrapped in a protective bomb blanket depending on the size, type of the bomb, or its construction. And for reason of safety, it must be loaded, transported through a bomb containment vehicle. So, how is your bomb containment vehicle looks like. So, kung nakita nyo yung mga armed vehicles, diba, makapal ang bakal niya. So, imagine those type of vehicle, your bomb containment vehicle. The vehicle to be used shall be marked with reflectorized placard on both sides and ends with the words BOMB on board on a visible manner. Okay? So, parang yung ambulance lang din, di ba? Tapos may sirin. Tapos may blinkers pa. So, what is the implication? At least, pagka nakita ng civilian, mag-giveaway sila. Same is true with your vehicle. Di ba? Dapat meron siyang reflectorized and bomb on board. Para pagka nakita ng civilian, at least kahit na hindi mo sabihan, alam na nila, di ba? Lalayo sila. All vehicles used for transportation of bombs, IEDs, shall be in charge of and operated by a person who is of mature mind. Of course, dapat mature yung ating driver at saka yung mga nakasakay doon. Physically fit, syempre hindi naman pwede yung pilay doon, di ba? Paano makakatulong yun sa pag-prevent uh, ng explosion, detonation, pagka-pilay o kaya walang kamay? Carefully, reasonable, yan, so dapat reasonable, if in case 
there will be an incident that the bomb be needed to be exploded, dapat reasonable, may rason, di ba? Pero kung wala, alam nila, that it should reach the the proper place to on where to detonate such bomb. And not to addicted to use of intoxicants or narcotics. Okay? So take note of this, ladies and gentlemen. So hindi pwede yung mga lasing. Yung mga lasing, lasing sa alak, lasing sa narcotics. He should be able, uh, he should be aware of the destructive effects of the bomb on board, of course. So, sir, sir, is it safe that the driver to transport OXU or IED is not an IED trained personnel? Siyempre, uh, ito yung sinasagot niya, di ba? Ito yung sinasagot niya. Siyempre, as much as possible, IED train dapat ang magtra-transport. However, in some cases, in the unavailability of an IED driver, so ito yung hanapin natin at civilian. Okay? So, hindi drug addict, mature mind, dapat physically fit, dapat careful, at saka reasonable. Dapat alam din niya yung effect ng bomb if in case sumabog on board. Vehicles to be used in transportation shall be in good repair as much as possible. Siyempre naman, the driver should plan the shortest route. So, ayan ang sabi natin kanina, shortcut ang hanapin natin na daan. In going to the command post by passing through a non-inhabited area. So, ito lang pala. Hindi natin nasabi kanina. So, aside from shortcut, ladies and gentlemen, ang pinakahanapin natin da daan is yung mga non-inhabited areas. Yung mga lugar kung saan walang tao na naninirahan. Now, if in case, ito yung problema, if in case there is a shortcut road, however, it is inhabited, mayroong mga population, and we also have a longer route, pero cemented siya, na uninhabited now paano tayo mamimili di ba paano tayo mamimili so case to case basis so one scenario is mayroon tayong shortcut pero inhabited di ba mayroong maraming tao tapos yung isang option natin mayroon tayong long cut pero concrete yung daan so hindi siya ma hindi maaalog yung ating uh, explosive ordnance pero uninhabited means to say walang katao-tao sabihin natin yung shortcut rough road now, paano tayo mamimili so if if there's a possibility that uh, we can inform the persons in that inhabited place to vacate their homes para luma, lumayo 50 meters away in the proper direction ha? dapat sa proper direction kasi baka mamaya maling direction yung nila sinalubong nila di ba? the best pa rin is yung shortcut okay so magdahan-dahan na lang Yun na, that is if we can be able to uh, inform the inhabitants to move away. So, kung pwede. Pero kung hindi, pero kung hindi, we have no option but to use the longer route. Uh, yung mas mahabang rota. Okay? So, yan. Next. Blast in place operation. So, when no other alternative AOD procedures applicable except to blast in place, 
the suspected improvised explosive device, IED, as a means of neutralizing it, following procedures are recommend, uh, recommended. Okay? So, blast in place operations. Means to say, wala na tayong ibang way to render, to render the bomb safe. Malayo naman sa population. Pwede natin pasabugin in place. Diba? So, blast in place. The team leader or senior EOD PLCO will determine the necessary course of action with the following considerable factors. So, first is the location of BAM. Whether the location is highly urbanized or in rural place. Diba? So, in mostly in rural place, provincia, pwedeng mag-blast in place. Pero, how about in urbanized, high, highly urbanized place? Pwede ba? Depende rin. Kung mapapalayo natin yung mga tao 50 meters away from the location of the bomb, pwede. Diba? Now, information and proper identification of the reported IED. It is very important for us to be able to identify what type of IED is that material for us to determine or to understand how the explosive initiates or detonates, how it works. And of course, uh, with that, we can be able to have a plan on how to uh, on how to properly detonate that bomb blast in place. Eh. Yan. Diba? So conduct interview of persons or individuals who reported the EOD incident or any available witness. Why? For the possible filing of criminal charges to the person liable for leaving that explosive in that particular place. Okay? So we should conduct interview of persons. Sino kayo nag-iwan ng bag na to? Na may lamang bomba. Ah, Naka-blue yung suit niya. Naka-blue upper siya. Naka-maong pants. Naka-meril na sapatos. Ano yung, ano yung pants niya? Levi's. <laughs> Malamang, gurot. Hindi <laughs> naman. Ha? Walang igurot na mag magkaka-interest sa BAM. Unless he's a member of the NPA, di ba? National, uh, New People's Army. Our insurgents. The insurgents. So, that's the importance of conducting interview of persons. For us to be able to gather witnesses for the, pra, for the pa, possible filing of, of appropriate charges against the person. Recon the suspected IED by using field glass or binoculars. Yan. So, mag-telescope tayo. Recon. This is applicable only in open places. Diba? Pero kung yung bomb, bomba na, kala, na nasa loob ng structure, okay lang kung uh, yung bomba is visible from the window. Pero kung paano kung nakatago from the window? Medyo mahirapan. Pero at least, we we can be able to identify possible di ba, suspected locations of that explosive. So, that's the use of, uh, that's the advantage of using binoculars. So, determine the external appearance or construction of the IED. Siyempre, improvised explosive device yan, di ba? So, unique ang itsura niyan. We have to determine the external appearance or construction of that IED. So, pagka unique ang itsura niya, mas mahirap i-detonate kasi hindi yan na-train, hindi yan napag-aralan na mga pump expert. So, kailangan talaga nilang i-identify yung itsura. Tapos yung parts. Hanapin kung saan yung initiator, hanapin kung saan yung explosives, and so on and so forth. Hanapin kung saan yung proper na Wire. Is it the blue, the black, the yellow, the red, the green cable to cut? Diba? And determine the course of action to be undertaken. So we have X-ray, the IED. Hanapin natin yung IED. 
So if uh, X-ray is not possible, we can make use of the K9 to detect explosives. Diba? Method of render safe procedure use remote removal. So when we say remote, malayo. Diba? So malayo sa populated area. We also have the hand entry and we have the blast in place or the BIT. If the location of the IED is in an enclosed structure and not visible for blast in place, Apply remote removal by bringing the IED outside of the building. So that's the remote removal. Okay. So it is talking about the bringing of the IED outside of the building to a safe disposal area for neutralization by using appropriate EOD procedures and equipment. So this is where the word rigging comes in. Rigging, diba? So, from an enclosed structure, i-operate natin yung tali na kahit na hindi natin nilalapitan yung bomba, natalihan natin yung bomba, tapos, mas mahirap yung pag-rig, ah. mahirap talaga to. Kasi hindi natin alam kung kailan sasabog yung bomba, eh. Kaya, bawal siya ang lapitan, pero, kailangan natin siyang talihan at ilabas from the structure. Ngayon, pagka ilalabas natin from the structure, Dapat din safe yung kanyang mga dadaanan. Dapat wala siyang mabubunggo na hard material, di ba? Na makakos ng impact. So, dapat walang glass. Hindi siya masasagi sa wall or any solid materials. So, that's your rigging. So, we, that's, uh, that's under your remote removal. Next, we have here the blast in place of a known IED is applicable in an open area and the following safety procedures outlined below are recommended. So, secure the area and control access of people within the vicinity. So, in short, wag tayong magpapasok ng unauthorized person, civilians in place. Bakit? Kasi papasab papasabukin natin in place yung bomb. Eh. E pagka pinasabog tapos may pumasok, may casualty na. Search area for secondary explosive devices. So, ito yung sinasabi natin. In every bomb threat, we expect that there are lots of bombs, not only one. So, if we are able to identify one, hindi na tayo, hindi pa tayo tapos dyan. Hanapin pa natin, halugawin natin yung buong building. Diba? So, protective work must be undertaken by means of baffling, which is placing sandbags around the IED to minimize blast fragments damage. So, ito yung sinasabi ko na pagka may concrete wall, cove, tapos limited yung oras nyo to hide yourself, you have to cover yourself over a concrete barrier or metal iron barrier. Now, in the absence of metal barrier or concrete barrier, we can make use of, ito yung sinabi niya, di ba? Sandbags. Ano yung sandbags? Yan yung mga sako na may lamang lupa. Diba? To reduce or to minimize the blast fragments. Yan. Pani tayo abutan nung pako ng IED. Yung fragments niya. Control damage. Okay? So, how do we control damage? We have to minimize the damage. We have to make all of our efforts to minimize the damage. And selection of necessary EOD tools and equipment for the operation. And so we have to select the proper tools for that specific operation. Why? Because not all uh, bomb threats or bomb related incidents are similar. Hindi, siya, wala, hindi sila pare-pareho. Magkakaiba yung mga yan. So, in every response, there is a unique, specific way, proper way to render safe that. 
contact the nearest medical and fire personnel. Okay? So, this is an SOP. Ah. Meron parati dapat medical and fire personnel. So, what's the purpose of the medical team? To conduct, of course, first aid. Diba? In case uh, there will be injured persons. How about the fire personnel? If in case there will be conflagration during the operation, diba? we should be able to kill the fire. Collect evidence for court presentation and ID, IED reconstruction. So, reconstruction again comes into two. We have your mental reconstruction and your physical reconstruction. Your mental reconstruction involves only imagining while your physical reconstruction involves dramatizing or assembling of the bomb. Uh, actually, in, in an explosion, in an explosion, we have to recover all pieces of the fragments. And from that, we have to identify what part of uh, that fragment is what part of a bomb. Yan, anong part kaya to? Is it, is it a fin kaya? Is it the pin? Anong klaseng bomb kaya yan? Kan, o, o kaya, kaninong, anin, anong part ng bomb kaya ang may pyesa na ganito? Di ba? Yan. So we have to identify what type of explosive what's used with the, uh, or using that fragment. Why? Because not all part of that bomb will be recovered. Hindi lahat marirecover natin. Kasi bakit? Kasi masusunog rin yan. Masusunog rin yung iba. So pwedeng kukunti na lang marirecover. E Siyempre, pagka kukunti lang na-recover, can we be able to, identify, uh, to assemble? Hindi, hindi natin ma-assemble. Kaya mahirap yung pag-identify kung anong klase ng, ng bomb yan o, o kung anong part yung na-recover nating fragment. Pag tako, automatic, alam natin. Uh, pag maraming tako, alam natin, fragment yun ng IED. Di ba? But for other parts, medyo mahirap. So, ano, what, is the, what is the importance ba of determining what type of bomb it was. Mostly pagka IED yan, gawa yan ng mga trained insurgents, yung mga walang permit to purchase explosives. ba? Kasi hindi sila makabili ng explosives and other materials. So, ang anong gagawin nila? mag invento sila ng sarili nilang explosives. ba? So, pagka IED yan, what comes in our mind is gawang, ano yan, gawa ng mga insurgents, mga rebels hindi nabili sa market. Pero pagka-conventional yun, yung explosive, uh, ang suspect natin is yung mga may capability to purchase. And pwede, with that, we can also counter-check the records from the CSG who among the clients bought that type of specific material. Sino ba yung mga kliyente natin na bumili ng mga gantong parts? Di ba? So, that's the importance of determining the type and part of the explosive. Well, explosive or nuts, I mean. Turn, turn over collected evidence to SOCO personnel for laboratory examination and furnish other EOD intelligence units, the IED nomenclature for technical intelligence procedures. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, ah, to uh, do this. Why? Because because parang yung crime lang, parang yung crime lang sa China. Yung pausbo, yung yung luma na, yung laos na na crime doon sa China, pupunta sa Pilipinas. Bago dahil bago sa Pilipinas, marami pa silang mabibiktima. So what am I refer uh, what am I referring? The double your money scam, di ba? Laos na yun sa China eh. Tapos nung pinunta dito sa Pilipinas, ang daming Pinoy na nag-invest ng mga pera nila, mga ari-arian, mga millions. So, first, one month, second month, 
third month, okay lang. Nadoble talaga yung pera nila per month. Pero, on the fourth and in the fifth month, wala na yung boss, wala na yung Chinese na sa ibang bansa na. So, sino ngayon ang kakasuhan ng mga nabiktima? Yung kapwa nilang Pilipino na nag-invite uh, sa kanila, di ba? Na nag-recruit sa kanila. Na pareho din natin, nabi, uh, pareho rin nabiktima. Di ba? <laughs> so, same is true, same concept is true in IEDs. Yan. So, if, let's say for example, the EOD team of Procore were able to identify a new type of IED, that new type of IED should be uh, forwarded to other I, uh, EOD of other regions. Na meron na pala tayong, meron na palang klase ng IED na ganito ang itsura na recover natin dito sa uh, Mountain Province. So, beware all operatives na meron tayong ganitong klaseng bomba na ginagawa ng mga NPA. Diba? Ng mga MILF pagkasamin na ng na-recover. And submit report to the higher headquarters. So, we have here the standard operating procedure number 3. So, we were done with SOP number 1. So, we will be, discuss, uh, be discussing this OP number 2. But, for a while, let's have a 5 minutes break. So, 5 minutes break. <coughs> 